The Third House is a wellness and astrology podcast meant to maximize our potentials and minimize our pain. Above all, The Third House is a space to help us gain clarity and inspiration to help us towards alignment. I'm Erica, your host and guide, and I'm committed to my own growth and evolution right alongside you. What is up, everyone? If you are new here, please subscribe, follow, and share. This is a brand new channel. And if any of you are interested in a one-on-one session with me, I do offer very affordable options for astrology sessions right now. So be sure to take advantage of that. And also just check out my website. There's more content, articles, videos, And if you subscribe to my website, you gain priority access to certain launches, certain pieces of content, discounts, offers, etc. So um, please be sure to do that. It's definitely worth it, especially with December coming around the corner. I am whipping up something in the oven for December that you don't want to miss out on. Now, anyways, let's talk about money. We all love money or love to hate money, but at the end of the day, we need money. And the second house in astrology is often referred to as the house of values, resources, and possessions. So it really plays a significant role in our lives, and it can also reveal our relationship with money, possessions, self-worth, and personal values. So I really want to explore its meaning, influence, and ultimately how it can impact your life. But before I do, I just want to say I am a Western astrologer combining ancient and modern techniques. So this is not Vedic astrology. I don't do Vedic. I don't do sidereal. I foundationally am a Hellenistic whole sign. However, I will use Placidus. I will use other house systems when needed um, and other modern techniques that I think are really, really valuable. So just want to say that. But anyways, getting back to money, knowing your second house can also help so much in relationships, business partnerships, and marriage. So whatever partnership you are forming, being able to look at both of your charts, um, especially, you know, the second house and the eighth house, among other things. Like, this is a very generalized podcast. Um, I want to keep it simple so that everyone can hopefully understand these concepts or foundational themes. Um, But really being able to look at, okay, the group, the partnership, whatever it may be, and understanding how viewing money through the lens of that person can really help establish who's going to manage the money, how are we going to manage the money, where... You know, I may be able to increase my income in certain ways, but that might not be applicable to my partner. So pushing those morals and values or how I view money on them is not fair. So where can, how can we look at their chart and see where they excel or where they struggle and how to work with that? So I find it's not only individually very valuable, but it is, it is extremely evalu- um, valuable in business, partnerships, marriage, um, anything where you're doing something joint where finances are involved. So, you know, for example, I can wholeheartedly say if you look at my husband's second house and the eighth house which is like our investments, long-term money, et cetera, um, which we'll get to another day. That's another video, but right now we'll just focus on the second. So if you look at my husband's second house, 
versus my second house, it becomes very, very clear who is better at organizing and managing. However, if you look at his second house, he has really great potential to make money. So, well, he has, let me specify that, he has the ability to always make money, but also spend it. So he'll make more, but he'll also spend more. Um, And, you know, there's varying aspects and placements that play into his chart. Like I said, I'm very, I'm generalizing. But if you look at mine, you can clearly see, okay, uh, communication, organization um, is, is my strong suit for sure in that area. And I've, I've always been that way. It has always translated my whole life. Um, you know, I, I remember when I was little, like I have a very, 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 I think Mercury is probably, it's a tie between Mercury and Jupiter, but Mercury is my strongest planet and it is in my second house. Um, And from the time I can remember, I was always thinking of ways to, you know, in terms of commerce or money. Um, I remember being a little kid and being like, okay, almost like creating like a little business. Like if I, if I do this or if I clean, like my parents didn't have to tell me to do chores. I was like negotiating how much they should pay me to do the chores. <laughs> so you can see where the exaltation of my Mercury in my chart comes up. Um, there's a bit more savvy with that. So, you know, it, like I said, it can really help not in, not only individually, where you can learn where your money-making opportunities are or where your strengths and weaknesses are, but also knowing whomever you're going into business with or any type of partnership, marriage, you know, where you're sharing finances or trying to grow something, it is very, very valuable to know this. So anyways, the second house is really, it has to do with resources in order to maintain life. Now, because the second house comes after the first house in the birth chart, it also signifies what follows after birth, where you come into the material world. So the ancient Hellenistic astrologers also referred to the second place or second house as the gate of Hades, probably because it's the last region of the birth chart where planets rise on the eastern horizon. So if you listened to my first house, podcast, you will have learned that the planets in your first house or around your ascendant were the planets that were rising on the eastern horizon. So your ascendant, your first house is the eastern horizon and your seventh house or your descendant is the western horizon. So it's not just this like idea in our heads. There's actual astronomy to your birth chart. Um, so with it being referred to as the gate of Hades, you know, it is that last region before the planets rise on that eastern horizon. So we can also assume that there could be an association with Hades in Greek mythology, which is often referred to as Pluto, the planet in our chart, which can also be associated with wealth. So Pluto's interesting. Pluto's a lot of things, but a lot of people fear Pluto. But Pluto can be our place of power, which is often associated with wealth or prosperity. And where where there's power, there's also pain, right? Anytime you're going to assume any type of power in a situation, 
there is often pain associated with that. So I think that's why Pluto gets a bad reputation among many things. I mean, Pluto is affiliated with the underworld. And, you know, based on what you believe in or your religion, you can definitely view Pluto one way or the other. However, Pluto on the chart can definitely tell you um, where your power is, where your transformation is. Because in order to reach higher levels of power, you have to transform. You cannot, in, at least in my opinion, I'm open to hearing other views. To me, it is impossible to reach higher and higher levels of true power. Mind you, I said true power without transformation and to me true transformation is evolution and growth it is not one or the other if you have growth without evolution it will eventually fall apart if you evolve without growing it'll never grow so pluto is your power but it's also transformation and that true transformation is required to reach higher levels of power and I think that's where the pain kind of comes in because anytime we change or transform it can be a painful process so what's interesting is knowing that um you know you look at Bill Gates I use Bill Gates because the majority of the world knows Bill Gates if you look at Bill Gates birth chart it is very obvious at least as a professional astrologer, it's very obvious why he has insane amounts of wealth. He has Pluto in the second house with Jupiter. Jupiter expands whatever it touches. So that is where you can see how the second house, you know, the ancient Hellenistic astrologers referring it referring to it as the gate of Hades, where our power, our pain is, but also great amounts of wealth. And, you know, tying that into Bill Gates' chart, where it's that story, it's very evident. It's very obvious. Now, the second house is also about our personal values and resources. So it deals, like I said, with our relationship to money material possessions and our self-worth so you look at my chart becomes very obvious what my relationship to money is and that is squeaky clean and organized this house also governs our talents skills and what we value in life so it's crucial in astrology because it really helps us understand our financial tendencies but also how we view our self-worth and what gives us a sense of security so keeping things honest and clean and communicative and also not only communicating but being clear in my communication and all ways around money and possessions and you know my financial tendencies gives me a sense of security Now, someone else is vastly different. It's vastly different. So someone like my husband and my husband's placements, you can, it's very easy to see that there is security in not only making more money, but also being able to spend more money on experiences with loved ones. So knowing that helps me in partnership with him and being able to organize the finances in order for him to fulfill those desires and his own sense of security. So now you can start seeing how things kind of work together. Now each planet that falls into that second house can have a unique influence on our relationship with money and possessions. So you want to look at your birth chart and look for the second house, see what sign rules over that second house. What planet is associated with that sign? So if it's Libra or Taurus ruling over your second house, 
where's Venus? Where's Venus in your chart? So you can start to see it's not just a second house. It's where the other planet is that's, that's reporting to that second house, that's playing a part in that second house. So, for example, my, let's see, what example do I want to use? Mine's not a good example because the ruling planet of my second house is in my second house. It exalted, so it's not really a good example if you're learning, in my opinion. Let's take, let's just stick with my husband's chart. The ruler of a second house is the moon, and the moon is in his 12th house, which is the house of isolation. So where he makes the most money is sort of working alone or and his moon is exalted in Taurus so he works from home before he works from home he was um, a molecular biologist and a scientist and he was a lab rat working by himself in a lab so he's always been able to generate income by having his own space or working in his own space um I'm trying to think of another example. We can use Bill Gates as well. I believe the ruler of Bill Gates' second house, (coughs) excuse me, is actually, I want to use a different example because it's going to go into my next point around where shame and guilt can often be associated with money. So I've, as an example, I knew someone who had a lot of shame and guilt around not having a career, not having a business. And I said, okay, well, let me look at your chart because that's going to tell me, it's going to bypass the shame and the guilt and it's going to tell me what's really going on here. And when I pulled up her chart, there is a very, very, very strong indicator of stay-at-home mom or literally being a professional mom. And all of the, the earned income in her life was heavily tied to partnership or marriage. So it became obvious. Your guilt and shame is most likely associated with what society or what other people are telling you you should be instead of who you really are. And so this is another reason why I think it's really important among many other reasons to look at the chart because you can so clearly see that you can put societal expectations to the side. You can put the guilt and shame to the side and say, okay, what, what's going on here? And how do we re-equilibrate you to who you really are so that you can stand, stand grounded in that and you can feel good in that. And it's, it's okay to, to be that and to earn money that way. So, you know, like I said, the second house can provide a lot of valuable insights into our financial tendencies, whatever they are. It's not societal expectations. It's your own, your own tendencies, your own lens. So for instance, if you have a strong second house, like myself, you may be financially savvy and really find comfort in a well-structured financial plan. On the flip side, A challenging aspect in this house might include struggles with money or self-esteem issues that affect your career choices. So really understanding your second house can help you make more informed decisions about your finances and career. And, you know, this is extremely generalized, but even if you have an afflicted second house, you can look for positive aspects in your chart or the higher functioning levels of that planet to gain insight around what to do so that you can create more security and stability in that area. So for example, oftentimes I get people who have Saturn in the second house. I struggled with poverty. I don't know how to manage money. And I say, because you have Saturn in the second house. It doesn't mean you're destined for 
poverty. It doesn't mean you're destined to struggle with money. It's that you're not doing your Saturn. And what does Saturn represent? Saturn represents discipline, restriction, delayed gratification, right? Not getting money and then spending it. It's delayed gratification. Saturn wants you to save, to increase, to grow, to build a strong foundation that doesn't fall apart. And Saturn is all is longevity. It it can take it Saturn wants you to create something over a long period of time. So, for example, when I tell people that Warren Buffett has Saturn in the second house, again I'm using Warren Buffett because most people in the world know who Warren Buffett is. He's the I think at this point he's like a what do you call like someone more than a billionaire, a trillionaire? Um So when when I tell people that Warren Buffett has Saturn in the second house, they're like, "Really?" Yeah. When you look at the life of Warren Buffett and how he lives and how he managed money, it is so Saturnian. He did his Saturn without a doubt in that area. And when you work with Saturn around being disciplined and structured to build long-term goals that don't collapse, that don't fall apart you're rewarded. Now, there's more details to his chart. Like Saturn is in rulership. So Saturn's in his home sign in the second house. He has other aspects to it that definitely give you a clear picture among many other modern techniques that could explain a deeper undercurrent picture. But I'm using this example to say just because you have a malefic in the second house does not mean you're destined for poverty. It just means you got to work with it. And Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett definitely worked with his Saturn in his second house and was extremely rewarded. So again, you got to peel back the layers of your chart. And analyze, like, you know, am I working with this planet? Am I working with this house? And by examining your birth chart and understanding the influence of the planets in your second house, you can really make conscious choices about your finances, career, and personal values. So it's also helpful to work on your self-esteem, and develop a healthy sense of self-worth. And a lot of times when I'm working with people in their second house, it's understanding how your self-worth is tied to your ability to earn more and obtain more. So there's two sides to this coin that I often see and work with is someone who is extremely financially abundant and they tie their self-worth to only that financial abundance. So if they lose money or they have a a bad month or whatever, they feel a lower sense of self-worth. That's not good. You're you're tying your self-worth too much to what you're earning versus the opposite side of the coin where someone has a hard time developing their self-worth. And so really having a strong place in the world or a seat at that table where they're like, I deserve, I'm talented, I am skillful, I deserve more, I deserve to gain resources and material possessions. You know, there's two sides to that coin. And you got to work with the second house and what's going on there, what conversations are happening there to understand you know, what's really going on and what you need to work on psychologically. Um, So for instance, I have a very strong second house. If you just looked at my second house, I have a very strong second house. And that's, that's most people that know me or are in my home frequently, they're aware of that. However, if you look at the aspects to the planets in my second house, 
you can see deeper layers of scarcity. So I definitely have layers of scarcity that I've, I've had to work on many, many years and which has impacted my ability to earn more or gain more resources. But knowing that really helps shift my perspective and use my talents for good instead of using my talents to go back into a scarcity complex and not develop my self-worth and move to higher levels of power and the ability to help more and more people. So understanding your second house can really help you understand how you can individually earn more money, but also do it in a way that is very specific to you and not what everyone else is doing. And where those deeper layers are for you to maybe somatically or psychologically work on in order to step into higher levels of earning more and gaining more resources in a much happier, better way. So overall, truly understanding your second house can be a really powerful tool to assist you with your self-awareness and mindfulness for your personal and financial growth. If you would like to learn more about your chart, you can connect with me at thethirdhouse.org. That's thethirdhouse.org, which can also be found in the description below where you can find additional content and appointments with me. Thank you so much for listening. Stay tuned for that third house.